the most dangerous place in America is the public library. It is more dangerous than wayward presidents who incite riots, more dangerous than judges who don't disclose gifts, more dangerous than unfettered police, more dangerous than a warmongering Department of Defense, more dangerous than any wall, moat, or sanction that we can impose. Bullets and bombs are relatively short-lived, but the ideas shelved in the stacks of a public library affect generations and can influence where those bullets and bombs go, or if they go at all. A good public library strives to represent the breadth of human thought and ideas. A great public library allows us to explore those thoughts and peel back time while embracing the contemporary and inspiring the future. Libraries are places where nuances can be explored. A place where representations of the human condition can be examined, refined, and sometimes even exploited. That's what makes libraries so dangerous. Nothing is more threatening to the status quo than a well-informed populace. That makes the public library the most punk rock institution in American life. If you are a corporate stooge looking to pick the lock of your corporate masters, you can find ideas at the library that you can use as your hairpin. If you want to do anything for yourself, skirting the shores of mass consumerism and corporate greed, the library has something for you. If you want to take direct action and avoid being a sellout, let the library help out. If you want to be a conformist, even you could find something representing or challenging your worldview. If you want to be the follower of an authoritarian regime, those in control probably won't even let you visit a library if there's one even left but their manifesto is probably shelved in one somewhere. Fiction is a lie that tells the truth. Go to the library for lies. Within those lies, you may just find something profound and meaningful, deeper truths. The most sensitive subjects can often only be explored comfortably from the distance of fiction. These lies carry power, and that power is often viewed as a threat. In reality, those who opt for fictional representations of humanity often develop deeper sympathy and empathy and compassion. While they may challenge existing power structures, at least they will be doing it nicely. The public library is egalitarian. It removes barriers, allowing even the most vulnerable among us access to esoteric knowledge and the tools to decipher it. It houses the voices of mainstream and marginalized alike in the text between the covers of its collection. Equitability is a threat to some of those in power. Allowing unfettered access to information encourages individuals to form their own intellectual identities. Some in power can't have that. Allowing narratives that don't support those in power to be accessed might influence people to challenge existing power structures, and that can be very dangerous. For all these reasons and more, public libraries across the country are under threat. Those in power are seeking to undermine the very institution that facilitates people exploring, learning, and thinking critically. Despots seek to control information. They want to fashion what you can engage with. They want to censor voices that don't support their agenda. They want to control what you think. Great libraries provide access, not restrictions. Public libraries have been seeing funding cut, ties with professional organizations severed, and access for certain populations restricted. Policies are being created that constrict the ability of Americans to freely engage with the material and information they want. Many of these policies directly threaten Americans' First and Fourteenth Amendment rights. Those in power often ignore the wishes of library users to push their own agendas. Some of those in power admit to religious motivations for these changes to a secular institution. Many are advocating limiting what books can and can't be purchased 
based on what lists they appear on. Others who are in power aren't even library users and are making decisions about an institution they've never used and don't understand. Those in power have even gone so far as to unironically ban participation in Banned Book Week, which has been around for over 40 years. They've also sought to eradicate the Library Bill of Rights, which was adopted in 1939 and eliminate freedom to read statements that were adopted in 1953. As Americans, we owe it to our neighbors to help protect the institutions that make our way of life possible. We need to be able to read dangerously. We need to have access to information that isn't spoon-fed to us by those in power through their preferred media outlets. We need libraries that are free of the bondage that the political zeitgeist inflicts. New mothers, who often feel isolated and disconnected, need to be able to sit with their children in a story time and form connections with others experiencing similar feelings. Tweens and teens need Judy Bloom and Vonnegut and Golding and Orwell and Huxley and Bradbury, all authors of banned books. Young adults need to be free to form their political identities without undue influence of one party over all others. Middle-aged adults need to be able to explore what they might be thinking about doing for their third act, or what to do as an empty nester, without having to have limits imposed. Seniors need to be able to engage in book clubs and exercise classes while allowing them to socialize in what can often be a very lonely stage of life. Minorities need to see themselves represented on the shelves. These are all hard-won freedoms that are worth fighting to maintain. But that will only happen if communities come together to support those freedoms. Show up to library board meetings, write letters, campaign for candidates that value libraries, vote. The time to protect your library is right now. Thank you.